App performance is really important for user experience. No matter how much time you invest in your project, if your application feels uh, slow and uh, unresponsive, the user will eventually leave a bad rating or even worse, a bad comment. That alone can reflect on the number of downloads for your app on the long run. Which is why tracking your uh, app performance and resolving these issues uh, quickly is crucial for your success. With that in mind, in this video I'm gonna quickly compare the difference between a Firebase Performance SDK and a Godzilla SDK. So here I have uh, one of my uh, projects that uh, I have recently worked on, it's called Nutrisport. And this is actually a KMP project. So, so we're gonna test uh, both of those SDKs, the Firebase uh, and uh, Godzilla SDK, to see uh, which one performs better, uh, which one is uh, easier to set up, and uh, which one is uh, more convenient to work with. So uh, this project itself uh, already includes uh, Firebase and uh, Godzilla SDK. So for the Firebase uh, part, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm already using a uh, Firebase uh, Git Live SDK, which is a third-party API. So that's why you need to make sure that you already have this uh, Firebase uh, performance uh, dependency, as well as a uh, Firebase Boom. Other than that, you also need to set up your Firebase project, but in this video, I'm not going to go through all of those stuff. And for the Godzilla SDK, first you need to make sure that you already have an account on their platform. So just visit Godzilla.io and register there. After you create an account right here, you can go to Android Studio, uh, also search for that uh, same uh, plugin in the plugin marketplace and uh, download this uh, coin uh, plugin. After that, you're going to see here uh, all your uh, modules that you currently have in your project. So it detects uh, that uh, automatically. In this case, I have the shared module, which is shared across platforms and also a target module for a separate uh, Android and the iOS target. Besides that, you also need to add dependency here, uh, either Godzilla SDK Kator or just the Godzilla SDK. So the reason why I'm using here uh, the Godzilla SDK Kator 3 is because that uh, my project actually depends on a Kator, in which case you do need to use this uh, other different uh, dependency. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details uh, about uh, setting up the Godzilla SDK in your project because I have already explained that in one of my previous videos. So if you haven't watched that, be sure to check it out. Anyhow, uh, when you open up this uh, Godzilla platform in your web browser, you can click here this uh, button to register a new application. From there, you can enter your application name, the application uh, package and uh, choose whether it's uh, a debug or a production. All those initial setup steps are uh, explained in details right here on this page. So I'm just gonna skip that, okay? And I have already registered my application uh, right here, so as you can see, uh, there it is. So the next uh, thing which I want to show you here is uh, two different places where I have uh, added this uh, code to uh, block the thread for uh, two seconds. So I have done that in the main activity of my Android application, so whenever this application starts, I want to simulate uh, some kind of an issue with my application so that uh, we can then check it out uh, on a Firebase and the Godzilla SDK and see whether those uh, two platforms are going to be able to notice them. Now, uh, this is the first uh, thread slip function which I have in my main activities and also in the home graph uh, view model. Uh, whenever we try to initialize this view model, we are also blocking the thread for two seconds. So we basically have uh, four seconds of a delay in our application. And of course, we are doing this uh, just to simulate uh, some kind of an issue on our app start. Uh, after that, I'm gonna make sure to update the version of my uh, project so that uh, we can see this new version appearing in, uh, in the logs on a Firebase uh, performance and uh, Godzilla SDK. So open up the Gradle build file of your uh, Compose app or uh, app uh, module. And here I want to increase the version to, in this case, 1.2 now. So this is uh, kind of necessary, or it's not, but you can increase this number to easily track the differences between uh, uh, multiple different versions of your app across uh, Firebase performance. It will be easier to detect and see uh, if something has changed uh, through those versions. So 1.2 version for, the, uh, for our Android application, and for the Godzilla SDK, we actually need to open up uh, the application class. So for the Godzilla SDK, this is the place where we define those versions. So I'm gonna increase that to uh, 1, so 1.0.4 in this case. And let's uh, observe our Android emulator for a moment, and then we will open up those um, uh, platforms, Firebase Performance and the Godzilla SDK, to see whether they have detected those issues with our application. 
So first I'm gonna open up the Godzilla SDK uh, because uh, the Firebase performance uh, does not actually detect those uh, changes uh, really quickly like uh, Godzilla platform. So we may need to wait for a couple of minutes actually to be able to see those uh, latest changes and that latest version that we have uh, specified. I'm gonna now refresh this uh, Godzilla uh, SDK uh, or Godzilla platform. Okay, so now here we have that uh, the new sessions uh, were registered. Let me open up here the settings and then uh, consumption. So 32 sessions analyzed. Let's open that up. And here we have uh, two sessions. I'm going to open up this uh, latest one. So two minutes ago, uh, the version 1.0.4. Now, one thing that I like about this platform is that uh, it shows quite detailed information about our uh, dependencies and our project, which is normal since uh, Godzilla SDK uh, is the same company which is behind the uh, Coin Dependency Injection Library. And that's why they have a comprehensive uh, reporting here uh, on their platform. So the first uh, thing that we will notice here is that uh, we, uh, we have waited around uh, two seconds for our customer repository. But our customer repository is not an issue here, okay? So if we open up our project, let me just here uh, open up uh, the uh, main activity first. So we are here blocking our uh, actual application whenever we open it up, okay? And in our uh, app uh, composable function, which is the UI that is shared across uh, platforms, we are injecting that uh, customer repository, okay? So the reason why we are seeing that uh, the customer repository is the one which uh, have an issue is because that uh, we are not able to initialize uh, or actually use this uh, class before those uh, two seconds of uh, blocking our main thread actually pass. So let's go back here. Uh, the next issue is uh, related to our uh, home uh, view model. So uh, if you recall, in our home view model, as you can see right here, we are blocking uh, this uh, thread also for two seconds. And this is also one thing which I like about this platform because it uh, shows uh, what kind of uh, dependencies uh, the home graph in this case depend on. So we can see the customer repository and the product repository as well. So both of those repositories uh, are resolved pretty quickly. And it's not the problem with those uh, repositories or those dependencies. Instead, the problem is with our home graph view model. Here in their uh, insights and recommendation section, they also say that all dependencies are resolved fast, so the problem seems related to the home graph uh, view model initialization, which is completely correct. So uh, Godzilla SDK offers uh, quite uh, detailed uh, reporting here on their uh, platform, and those information are actually useful because uh, we don't have to waste our time uh, finding out uh, where exactly uh, the issue with our app performance actually is, so we can track that uh, really easily. And uh, all of these uh, things are uh, tracked and uh, recorded uh, automatically out of the box, without the need to go through our project and uh, manually specify uh, what kind of uh, issues we want to track and uh, other different things. Uh, now let's go back to uh, our Firebase performance uh, tab right here. I'm going to refresh this uh, page for a moment and uh, uh, hopefully I'm going to see here the new version, so 1.2, there it is. So in this case, when we open up the Firebase performance, we will see that uh, uh, two seconds delay uh, on App Start as well. So that's uh, the single metric which is currently uh, available right here out of the box. So we don't have uh, any more uh, details about uh, our actual project and uh, why this uh, app is actually starting uh, or delaying for uh, two seconds. So we cannot see that. We can even open up those uh, metric details uh, to see some more information, but I don't see anything uh, specifically. And the other thing uh, which is uh, important to point out is that uh, if you want to track uh, your other different classes and dependencies, you need to set those uh, metrics uh, manually by yourself. So from here we can choose one of those uh, plus uh, icons and then we can select uh, what kind of uh, uh, trace uh, types we want to uh, use. So we have a network request traces, custom traces or a screen rendering traces. Now the thing about the Firebase is that uh, you need to set up all those traces uh, manually by yourself. And sometimes you don't even know where to add those uh, traces exactly. So this is the main difference between a Firebase and a Godzilla SDK. So unlike the Firebase SDK, Godzilla SDK uh, does all of these uh, things uh, by itself, out of the box. So you don't have to do any uh, manual tracing by yourself. And they uh, even have a comprehensive uh, reporting on their platform, which is quite understandable and uh, 
everyone can notice uh, what's going on uh, behind the scenes so we can see um, the actual uh, class uh, which is problematic we can see all the dependencies of that uh, class how long it took for them to actually uh, to resolve and a bunch of different details uh, we can also try and test uh, other different things like for example open up one of those dependencies that the home graph view model depends on like for example the product repository we can open up this implementation class and uh, for example also specify that uh, thread sleep uh, for a two second right our application will uh, take even longer to actually initialize everything because now uh, instead of two seconds we, we might need to wait around uh, four seconds so let's also go back to our platform and uh, see whether uh, the Godzilla SDK will be able to detect this change so now in this case uh, we have a delay of uh, two seconds here two seconds here and uh, six seconds in total for our products uh, or view uh, view model so I'm gonna explain why uh, does this actually happens. Then we have a here a home graph uh, view model. So now for our product repository, we can see that the product repository uh, was actually initializing for uh, two seconds. And that's the exact uh, same uh, delay that we have already specified by ourselves. Okay. And then if we uh, add those uh, two seconds with those two seconds here and two seconds here, we're going to get uh, six seconds in total for our uh, product uh, or products overview view model. So you can see that the product repository here was actually initialized uh, pretty quickly. And the reason for that is because that we have already initialized this uh, uh, products uh, repository in our home graph view model. So we don't have to initialize it twice. That's why that uh, sleep function for the product repository was triggered only once. And the reason for our product overview view model to be uh, slowed for uh, six seconds is because of the home graph view model along with the product repository. So let me just open that up in our project. So uh, I'm going to open up now the home graph screen. So as you can see, this uh, home graph screen contains a, a nested navigation graph where the product's uh, overview is a, a star destination. And this uh, product's overview screen actually contains that uh, product's overview view model. And this uh, view model cannot be initialized unless first we initialize the product repository. Okay, so this is quite important. And this is a perfect case where you can see how other parts of your app can directly reflect on your other different uh, components that depend on it, okay? So in this case, the product's uh, overview view model actually depends on the initialization speed of our uh, home graph view model because this uh, screen is actually nested in our home graph. So our main activity is uh, waiting for uh, two seconds on an uh, app startup. The home graph view model is also waiting for two seconds or on its initialization. And our product repository is also waiting or blocking the thread for two seconds. So all those three delays of two seconds immediately reflected on our product's overview view model. So that's why we can see six seconds delay for our product's overview view model. Because this actual screen product's overview is nested inside the home graph. So I hope that this example was uh, really insightful for you to see how uh, one component and uh, one part of your project can uh, reflect and affect the performance of your uh, other parts of your app. Anyhow, uh, comment down below and let me know if you have used this uh, Godzilla SDK before. And of course, don't forget to leave a like to this video, but uh, only if you find it helpful. Thank you for watching.